Psychiatry is rather a new science. It's only over the past few decades where terms have become defined and clarified. Freud's work describes repression and other mechanisms were not so well understood. The research continues. This video will cover the more familiar ones for general overview. This presentation is made with a geriatric population of 3 South NPI UCLA in mind. No one defense mechanism is used by a person. People use a combination of defenses. However, for the purpose of understanding and breaking things down, we will focus on only one defense mechanism at a time. Repression. Repression is the basis of all defense mechanisms, and other defense mechanisms reinforce it. Repression is initiated to keep anxiety-provoking feelings and thoughts that would disrupt self-concept from consciousness. It protects the self from a traumatic event until the individual can deal with the shock. Feelings are pushed down, out, into, out of awareness, forgotten, but they continue to exert pressure for expression. It takes energy to maintain this. People who are stressed out may not have that energy to maintain the repression. Feelings may come to the surface and be expressed. Nursing intervention needs to be supportive and protect the client's defenses. After the initial shock has lessened, the client's anxiety will be decreased and the person can be assisted to look at the traumatic event. Dissociation. A person is in conflict over significant others disapproval of some aspect of self. So, the self disowns the feelings of expression, qualities, or personal experience. The person can be dimly aware that something unusual is happening, but doesn't own the feelings because they are too anxiety provoking. It can also inhibit functioning. Denial. Denial. This is not a ball. The person using denial disregards sensory experience and fails to look at their own behavior. When confronted, people in denial do not recognize their feelings, experiences, or behaviors. Denial can afford protection, preventing serious personality disorganization. However, denial can also prevent the person from problem solving and obtaining the help that they may need. The nurse needs to assess how the patient is using denial and when it is keeping the person from healthier solutions. The nurse can focus on instances where the patient may be starting to deal with the reality. Maybe this round object can bounce. When the person is assisted in recognizing he has other resources and can still be productive through different ways, the need for denial will decrease. Intellectualization and minimalization. It's only a ball. In minimalization, the anxiety-provoking feeling is so overwhelming, the person tells himself that the threat is much less than it is. This makes it easier to cope by decreasing the anxiety. People using intellectualization become detached from the emotional content of the material. They have a knowledge about it, but they are not in touch with it. The nurse who asks how their knowledge base relates to them personally opens the person to explore their emotional reactions. Somaticization, a familiar one for us on 3Cell. Oi, nurse, my back hurts me, my bowels haven't moved in four weeks, and my nose is bleeding. I'm in such rotten shape, I can't possibly continue the video. Undoing. Just kidding. Rationalization. This is how you do it. But 
since uh, I have to fill an entire hour with information about self-defense mechanisms, I'll talk for about 20 minutes on the video, and that will leave 45 minutes for discussion. Suppression. I won't think about how anxious I am to continue talking about defense mechanisms. Reaction formation. I want to continue talking about defense mechanisms. Sublimation. I'll take this nervous energy and use it productively to finish the video. Projection. I hope you're not all too anxious to get your charting done. To be thinking about examples now and contributing to the discussion after this video. Idealization and passive aggressiveness. I notice idealization used quite a bit by some of our needy, demented patients on 3 South. You're such a wonderful nurse. Just bring me a cup of coffee, darling. I sense there seems an ulterior motive to this. I attribute this to our position as caregivers. It can be a control power struggle. When a dependent person wants their needs met, but feels helpless, they're apt to use more indirect methods of protecting their ego, yet gaining control, such as passive aggressiveness. Sure, I'll do anything you say, nurse, but I won't swallow my pills. I'll hide it under my tongue, and I'll spit it out into the cup as I take a drink. This leads us into acting out. When your patient's yelling help in the halls, refusing to call for assistance to walk and then falls, when they moan and groan as if they're going to die and they throw a temper tantrum and start to cry, it's acting out, it's acting out. When they vomit up sputum all over the couch and they demand their pills immediately and act like a grouch, when they knock their dinner tray onto the floor and they stand at the station and bang at the door, it's acting out, it's acting out. When they throw a cup of water into your face and they swear they'll never come back to this place. And they refuse to shower and brush their teeth. You know, they feel they lack power and they seek some relief. It's acting out. It's acting out. Regression. My name is Augie Mugawumpf. I'm here to talk to you about regression. Augie, would you quit sucking your toe and tell them about regression? Oh, sorry. Regression is a return to a previous stage of development or functioning to avoid anxieties involved in later stages. People return to earlier modes of behavior previously given up. This defense mechanism is often the result of a disruption of homeostasis at a later phase of development. Thank you, Avi. You're welcome. According to Annie Clervon, in her article, Treating Regressed Elderly Patients, the nurse needs to think about what developmental level the patient has regressed to. How is the health status of that person? And what support systems do they have available? and whether they're involved in those support systems or not. The regressed patient is using a more primitive coping mechanism from an earlier time. The unmet dependency needs resurface. Even so, the person is still an adult and needs to be treated as such. Baby talk is unnecessary. It's used with infants because they hear the higher pitches better. With adults, as nurses, we need to respect their dignity and educate significant others to do the same. Therapeutic touch can be reassuring to them and give them a sense of security that somebody cares. Avoidance. Hey, Heidi, come back. Come on, Heidi. Come on back, Heidi. They don't call me Heidi for nothing. Just a little humor. In Jolien Simmons' article, Therapeutic Humor, Who's Fooling Who? She writes that humor assists clients in coping with stress by providing emotional distance between the person and the immediate problem. Laughing is a tension release. 
humor for nervous energy. Humor can block feelings of apprehension and panic. It allows patients to bring up uncomfortable subjects. Be aware and listen for indirect messages. With clients who appreciate humor, the nurse can initiate humor in her interactions to assist the client in gaining another perspective on problems facing them. Think about the appropriateness of humor, but also consider the significant impact humor has on helping people feel better and relieving tension and making situations more tolerable for both the patient and the nurse. Avoidance behaviors such as mumbling with uncomfortable topics also reduces anxiety. Mary Ellen McHale in her article Mumbling a Defense Mechanism in Therapy Resistance writes about resistance to content or process. Mumbling protects the individual from the intensity of feeling they're expressing, such as a hostile patient mumbling under their breath. Then the patient may go to their room and fantasize about murdering their nurse. Fantasies can be an escape from the direct conflict. It's expressed symbolically and again provides psychological distance in which the person can feel more control over the conflict and less anxiety. In the words of Lewis Carroll, author of Alice in Wonderland, in a wonderland they lie dreaming as the days go by, dreaming as the summers die, ever drifting down the stream, lingering in the golden gleam. Life, what is it but a dream? <laughs>